Hi everyone, so today I have an incredible story to share with you. This is Celine. Celine actually emailed me late last week and she shared with me her story and it is absolutely incredible what she has achieved. She shared with me her story and when I was reading this email I was absolutely blown away but there was a little part of me that thought this might be a practical joke and that someone was setting me up. Anyway, I forwarded the email on to Tom, who is the world's most skeptical person. And he replied back and was like, Canna, that's incredible, absolutely amazing. So I replied back to Celine to congratulate her on her successes and her achievement. But I also invited her to come and meet me in person and to have a chat, hear her story in her own words. And not only did she agree to do this, but she also very kindly and graciously agreed to share her story with you. So as I publish this video for you, I would love to hear from you what you think about this and if you enjoy the video and want more like this. If you find this video inspiring and motivating, let me know by putting a comment in the comments box below, giving me your feedback and letting me know if you want more videos like this. And also make sure that you give me that really important thumbs up so I know to keep going. Also, it would be really fantastic if you think this video is important and powerful, particularly for millennials, and you'll know why when you watch this video, please can you make sure that you share this video? Can you please forward this video to 10 millennials that you think will benefit from this video? Or simply share it on your social media platforms. Now, this video is a little bit longer than usual, and at times, Celine gets a little bit nervous because she's a little bit shy, but her words are incredible, and what she has achieved is will absolutely blow you out of the water and make you realize how powerful you are too. So listen up and hear what this incredibly powerful and successful millennial has to go. She's got a bright future ahead of you and she wants you to know that you can do this too. Enjoy watching this video and don't forget to comment and give me the thumbs up.
you pick it up, you're also saying, sending a very powerful message to the universe. You're like, I respect money, I appreciate money, I will honor money, and that then gets reflected back in your life because yeah. what you appreciate and appreciate. You were still working in retail, you did a couple of other things to raise money and yeah. so tell me about them. Well, what I did was initially I made a budget. I didn't know what a budget was until I watched your videos, which is, it sounds bizarre, but in school you obviously don't get taught these things. So you I don't get taught this at university. So it's yeah. not just school, it's university. It's crazy. Yeah, that's like, right. Yeah. yeah. So I started budgeting and then I gave myself a goal to reach by the end of the year. And I can't remember exactly how much it was, but just as an example, let's say it was you know, $2,000 by the end of the year. And it surprised me because when the end of the year did come around, I had 5000 let's say, in my account. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to be realistic when I wrote 2000 but I was just so hungry and so motivated that it just built it up and built it up. And the fact that every cent counted, I think it just accumulated from there. And every time you logged into your savings yeah. account, how would you feel? I just felt more and more inspired to keep going and sorry to answer your question the way that I was making money other than being a retail assistant was selling the things that I had in my house you know buying things for cheap and then selling them on eBay as well which was awesome. You were flipping things. Yes. Yeah, I love things. it like yeah. eBay does. That's yeah. so cool. I didn't realize that there's a huge market on eBay for Bedling and you know Sheridan and all of those things so the other things I was doing was tutoring. What sort of things were you teaching? Uh, so it was primary school kids, yep. so teaching them English and maths mainly. Okay. And did you find that really enjoyable? Yes, it was amazing. It was because they would come back to me and they'd be like, oh, I got this grade in class and it made me feel so good. So rewarding yeah. on different levels. Yeah, Which very rewarding. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up taking up a second job. And I know not everybody wants to do that because of tax purposes, you get taxed more. But, but the yeah. thing with that is, a lot of people think, oh, if I get a second job, I'll do tax the top money or tax rate. Right? You will, but it will even out in the wash because at the end of the financial year, you'll be taxed at what you earned between the two salaries. So That's it's, right. a, it's, almost like, it's almost like forced savings because it means yeah. you'll get a good tax refund. Yeah, so it was amazing because actually the money I was getting from tutoring, I was using that as my spending money. Mm -hmm. Were there other times where you felt like you were missing out or depriving yourself or you were just so motivated and focused you didn't... That, it was what you were gaining outweighed the things you were losing. Yes, actually, it's funny you ask that because what happened was I eventually burnt out. So the problem with this as well is if you work too hard, if you overwork yourself, you can easily burn out. And I ended up hitting that point of my life. And it caused me to realize, am I actually living or am I just working? Yeah. Am I going to be like this forever? So, <coughs> You know, at the time, me and my partner, we were dating for so long. I think it was like six years or something, because like, we met in high school. And yeah. I just said to him, you know what, I'm focusing so much on money, 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 mm -hmm. that I'm not really living. And what if I die before I get the chance to live? Yeah. So I said, screw this, let's get married. Oh, <laughs> so, oh wow. Yeah. So what happened was... Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I know. working really hard and we're just going to go for it so we ended up getting married earlier this year. Oh congratulations. Yeah, that's so cool. cool. Yeah. Um, okay, the question that's burning on everyone's lips because I've got more questions to ask you. Yeah. Um, how much did you save at what stage and how much have you saved up to today? Okay, so basically uh, from three years ago when I was 18 I had nothing, and then today I was able to save one hundred thousand dollars. So that's just you, not your partner. Just yeah, you. just me. Oh my gosh. So you, you have, you know, you've saved more than I have done on the thousand dollar project because I'm up to round three of the thousand dollar project, and I am, I think I'm at like eighty something thousand. Wow. You are, okay. you have whipped my ass. <laughs> you beat me at it. Like it's yeah. unbelievable. Well, the other thing is, the other advantage I had was I was living with my parents, so I didn't have any bills to pay. Uh, I wasn't paying for grocery shopping. They were doing all the spending, so that helped me. Yeah, it does. And then, you know, I want to make something, a really big point about that, because some people were going, oh, she's at home, that was easy. Actually, no, there is so much um, media and conversations about how tough it is for millennials, how... Um, 
they are going to never be able to get into the property market. They don't have enough discipline, they don't have enough focus. Yeah. There are I want right now generation. Um, you are proof that that's not the case at all. Yeah. Um, living at home is an amazing opportunity to save um, you know, and, and create a, a good nest egg that you can use to get your foot in the door of the property market or establish a, an yeah. investment portfolio. So like you are living proof that the, all this like doom and gloom for poor millennials is not the case. Like, and this is what I really want to talk about on my channel and some videos um, next week is about the opportunities and advice out there for millennials to be like Celine and to, to really get ahead. Yeah. Um, now, what is your goal with that $100,000? So actually what we ended up doing, because I spoke to my partner, we invested it in different areas. Also, a lot of the money we still have, like I didn't spend all of it, we are keeping it on the side, like emergency money, which you always promote. And the thing is, he never knew what emergency money was until I introduced it to him from your channel. And it's been so helpful to have that security. We know that if something does go wrong or just say one of your cars breaks down, you don't think about these things, but it will cost you a lot. And these things do happen when we're not um, immune from things like that happening. Yeah. We get parking fines, we have dental bills, medical bills. Like This is life. So yeah. that's so responsible. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you one last question. Um, you talked about um, you've got your your husband, I should say. Yeah. Um, at times, were you guys in sync with each other about money? Because you've been obviously working your yeah. um, backside off, yeah. like hustling, saving, working like long hours, and you know how has your how has that been with your partner? Yeah. So what happened was once I started to become more motivated from these videos, I tried to. Uh, bring him to my level and I realised that not everybody thinks the same way, not everybody has the same life goal and not everyone's at that point yet, so yeah, they, right. they may be slowly watching on the sidelines, sitting on the fence, yeah. but they're not ready to jump and we always have to respect that. Yeah. So we reached a point where I ended up giving him an ultimatum and I said, you know, you're either on board with me or you're not because I had this goal where I just really wanted to buy a house and that's the other thing, a lot of our money is still there because we want to buy a house and he's saving as well but initially he wasn't and it frustrated me so much but instead of making an argument about it we spoke about it and communicated and in the end he decided that he wants to go ahead obviously with the relationship mm -hmm. me being his motivation and now he's doing really well successful in his job and he's saving more than me now <laughs> is he more motivated than you now I'm still more motivated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so Selena, I was just saying, like you and like relationships and money are really, it's a really tough, touchy, sensitive subject. But you've always got to come from a place of motivation, inspiration towards your partner. Yeah. And as I said, they're not always necessarily right there, right yet. But you, you let silence be a success. You never like, um, you know, put pressure on or be mean or bully your partner. Just gently educate, gently inspire, let them see and feel the benefits that you're experiencing yourselves and slowly like introduce them and show them what you're doing and eventually they will get on board and um, you're never going to be perfectly in sync. There's going to be sometimes where one partner is feeling a bit flat and unmotivated um, or the other one's thriving. That's where you need to work together as a team, be, you know, unite, um, united front is what Tom calls it and pull each other through. And there'll be times where you both are down or you're both yeah. up and you need to be, you know, you're very powerful when you can work together, whether you're in sync or not, but when you actually connect together and communicate respect, but also always come from a place of motivation and inspiration from a gentle perspective. Yeah. Um, I am so incredibly proud of you and I am so <laughs> incredibly inspired by you. And so is Tom. Um, and it's funny, last night I was at an event and I saw Chloe Morello and I was telling um, Chloe about Celine and she was laughing. She said, always laughing. I'm like, no, 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 you like believe it. You could see this email. I pulled it up and I started reading to her. She was like, oh my God. And like, there's another this, like beautiful Russian um, blogger there as well. And she was like, oh wow. I'm like, I'm meeting her tomorrow. I'm going to hear all about this. So. Um, to all millennials out there, um, I hope you realise you, you've got an amazing opportunity in front of you to build incredible financial security and wealth ahead of you. Yeah. And I would 
love it if you could keep me posted on how you're going, what you're doing through your journey, for your partner as well, so that we see this motivation. Like, obviously, it's been going for a couple of years now, and I'm sure it's going to continue on indefinitely. I hope so. I would love to hear about all the other amazing great things that you do, if you'd yeah. be happy to share it with us. Um, on the YouTube audience. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd love to. Thank you so much for having me. I feel so honoured to be able to meet you and you've honestly changed my life and my partner's and I look around at all the people, all the friends I have and honestly our generation is not as motivated and they don't have that belief because of the media. And yeah. That's how I was initially. Well, yeah. The media tends to focus on the doom and gloom, and this is where I really want to try to break away from that. And let's yeah. go, let's talk about solutions, let's talk about strategies, let's yeah. figure out a way we can motivate each other and we can prove the media wrong because yeah. sometimes that is clickbait. Sometimes, you know, doom and gloom gets people that sells newspapers, magazines, yeah. and, you know, negative news sells, unfortunately. And I really want to, like, crush that habit and actually, like, be the voice that leads by example and shows people little things to. Have it definitely does. And one thing I just want to say to the young audience is it's so important to also prioritize because of the whole Instagram world as well. It's easy to get sucked in and think, I want this, I want this, I want this. And it's really about biting your tongue. And once you start to see the money build up, that's when you just keep working hard for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Success yeah. like it fuels your motivation to yeah. be that progress. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching. Um, please make sure you check out my other videos, in particular you know, my conversations with Ellen, um, who also um, saved a huge amount of money at a very young age, on a very humble, um, simple background. Um, these are the stories that are going to be your wake up call to change your financial future forever. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you next week for the last time. I love it. Make sure that notification <laughs> button is switched on.